You know, I, I, I really wanted to get in front of this camera and say, boy, we dodged a bullet by not going to the mummy. Yeah. But now I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That was fucking bleak. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> we, we just saw it, it comes out at night. Yeah. More like it doesn't come out at night. It's, uh, it's not even clear what it is. Is there, I don't think there is an it. There isn't an it. Okay, here's the thing. We got to spoil this because oh, there's, yeah. The the title of the movie is it comes out at night. Yeah. Which implies it's a monster movie, but it is not at all. No. There is no it that comes out at night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's implied, yeah, but it's never shown. I feel like maybe, and I, I'm spoiling this because one of my biggest peeves is when a movie lies to me, mm. and this this movie lied to me, mm -hmm. and I I feel betrayed by it, and that's why I got to say if if you're gonna go into this expecting a monster movie, you're not gonna you're get not that. Gonna get that. Yeah. Not at all. Now I don't think this is a bad movie. It was it was very engaging. That's for sure. Yeah, um, online a lot of people were likening it to uh, The Witch, actually. Yeah, you know what, now it does feel... Uh, yeah. It, it does feel... Because uh, it, it is a very... Um, well, I mean, it's kind of the same setup. You know, they're in the woods and shit's going on. Yeah, but instead of it being set in... Um, like old uh, colonial Puritan times, it's yes. some weird post-apocalyptic plague just swept yeah. through the world or something. And it takes place uh, in, uh, I don't know, some wooded area, I guess. You, you know what it looked like? It, it kind of looked like one of those places where you go where you rent a cabin yeah. and you hang out for the weekend. Exactly, something like that. <laughs> you know. Which I'm sure, I, I have a feeling that's what they did. Yeah. Rich people camping. <laughs> anyway. I, yeah, um... <laughs> One of the one of the interesting things about this is, it takes place during some kind of apocalypse. Yeah. That it's, they don't explain, which I think is kind of cool because that's uh, it. It kind of isolates things a bit. Like you know, in a lot of apocalypse movies, a lot of zombie movies or whatever, like yeah. you know what you know what's going on. You're informed. The, the yeah. viewer is informed. This in this one, the viewer is not informed. We know as much as the characters. Yeah, you which kind of adds to the the paranoia and the the, the suspense. Yeah, which does help. But at, in the end, I, you know, I looked at the reviews online. It's like, oh, this is a horror masterpiece. I'm like, I wouldn't call this a horror uh, film. It's it's a thriller at best. Not even. I. It's more it's, like um, like one of those Children of Men or The Road. This is like a Cormac McCarthy novel. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe like a chapter from a Cormac <laughs> McCarthy novel, not the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I just... I, I don't know. I, I, didn't, I didn't hate this movie. I just felt no. kind of... I just felt kind of betrayed by it. That's all. Of this. Yeah. We were expecting <laughs> something to come out at night. And yeah. Nothing, and they, there was nothing a, came at night. There was a moment where, like, oh, the dog saw something... And then it ran off, and then we never found out what it saw. Yeah. So, fuck off, I know. But that, that, that is that is kind of one of the good things about it. Like I said, it's uh, we know as much as the characters do. So, and you, you, the whole movie, we're also kind of waiting for some kind of explanation, and it, it never comes. It's never. But yeah. it, it, it does add to the, 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 just the fear factor of it. Yeah. Um, I, I I would say the uh, this well, you know what this movie's about it's about it's about paranoia it really it, it's, it really is the monster is man <laughs> <laughs> I have created the most evil animal in the world it, it turns, turns out, out it's, it's man, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically that's that's this movie in a nutshell um, essentially so God. the whole basic premise is they're all living out this this family living out in the woods it's a husband a wife and their son uh, Travis. Yeah. And so, um, one night, well, it opens with, uh, the, what's the grandfather's name? Bud. Bud, yeah. Getting, uh, he was, like, 
stricken with this he, plague. He had the the sickness. Yeah. Whatever he was, that he was down with. <laughs> I was about to make the. <laughs> yeah, and, and they don't they don't really they don't really show what the sickness is. I guess it just kind of slowly kills you. It kind of looked like um, it's like leprosy. It had like you, like I was thinking more sauce. bubonic. I was thinking more bubonic plague because it had, because of the, the uh, sores the that they had. Yeah, the yeah. lesions and sores and he had. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That that would be a a good explanation. Yeah, like the plague has returned. Something like that. I don't know. Um, but anyway, the movie opens with uh, Travis and his father Paul taking Bud out, and they put a pillow over his head. They they yeah. put one in his ten spot, and that's the that, end of that. Bud. Pretty much tells you what you're in for yeah. with this one. That's pretty much. Uh, there's a lot of killing. Well, uh, a lot for this movie because there's a very small cast. Yeah, it's a um, cast of only like maybe what seven people if you count Bud. Yeah, and then those two guys they run into. Yeah. Yeah. Who didn't even get any lines before they got it, shot. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, most of the uh, most of the issues kind of come from uh, come from uh, him because he's you you can tell he's he's on edge yeah. all the time in this movie, uh, and you well, you know you you know like you immediately know where where this was gonna go or at yeah, least I it, thought it was. But in Paul's but, case, it never got to the point of complete irrationality. Though. Yeah. I mean, his fears were justified. They were. And, oh man, this is a hard <laughs> one. This is hard. So, I'll take, we'll take you through the plot. So, essentially, yeah. this, where Bud was being kept is the only way in and out of the house, which is why they kept him in that room. I have no idea if that's the case. But, anyway, <laughs> so they hear a bunch of rattling around one night after uh, Travis has a nightmare. Yeah. He's roused from his sleep, and they hear some guy banging around, and it turns out to be Will, who was trying to rummage for supplies. He thought the um, house was abandoned, which he explains yeah. later after being tied to a tree for two days. Yeah. Well, they had to make sure he did, He wasn't down with the sickness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. So they, they, they question him, and he says, you know, I have a wife and kids, and we're looking for stuff. And yeah. um, so they... Uh, they come to an arrangement. Yeah, they they have them come live with them, and they have a goat and a chicken and a bunch of other food. And, yeah, and uh, things seem pretty good at first. But yeah, there's then, a nice little montage. Will's it, teaching Travis how to chop firewood and stuff, yeah. and Kim, Will's wife, is learning like how to, you know, boil the wa purify the water that they drink and all that other stuff. And yeah, and then it just goes downhill. <laughs> it, it just goes to shit because one night Travis wakes up and finds um. Andrew, Kim, and Will's son sleepwalking, and it, so it, it, he tries to he brings him back to his room. Yeah, and then uh, the red door is the one that's never supposed to be open. The only way in and out of the house. Yeah, it was opened. Yeah, and they found their dog. By the way, uh, I was that that was my biggest fear of this movie. I heard you. I was Actually, like, you was like, like, no. Because no. as soon <laughs> like as... Under your breath. As soon as, Here's the thing. When you introduce, like, a dog into a movie like this, it's it's probably not going to survive. No. I mean, you remember I Am Legend? Yeah, remember, unfortunately. Yeah, this stuff like... So, yeah, they, they found... Um, he found the dog kind of with, like, a giant bite mark out of it which i guess or, or something it was some sort of lesion on its or, or maybe it or was something. just in they didn't they they did not explain no they didn't they did it just explain. showed up like oozing like with oozing sores and wounds yeah and, and so they had to they had to put them had to put them down yeah which uh, ups really upset travis because that dog was like yeah the only real friend he had yeah man he was uh he was very interesting in this movie because you could tell like this whole situation was fucking with him. Yeah, it was because he just had like constant nightmares. Yeah, seeing visions of uh, his grandfather Bud in his sleep, and yeah. then there was you know then the, like the the wife Kim. <laughs> so, yeah, so he had his eyes on her, and like the there was the one nightmare where she basically just vomits this black bile into his mouth. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it doesn't go any. That doesn't really go anywhere after that. They have like some. Yeah, weird... There was another one where he woke up, uh, where uh, he was having a nightmare, where he looked up and he saw his dad with black eyes. 
Was it his dad with black eyes, or was it Will with black eyes? I thought it was Will. I thought it was his dad. I don't know. No. It it, it wasn't that important, unfortunately. Apparently it, not. It was just there to, you know, show you that he was having... he Like, he was... He was kind of traumatized by this whole thing you know, understandably because he's like he was like 17 and yeah yeah you're uh it's not not in the best mindset to be uh in that kind of situation no but, uh anyway um so the problem is they um they have to uh they decide to kind of isolate each uh, each of the families decide to like isolate themselves yeah they quarantine just, themselves just just to basically. make sure you know they're not sick mm -hmm. but um they hear the um they hear the son crying a lot and they yeah. hear overhear them saying you know wanna uh we, we need to get out of here or something like that and it seemed like it, it was left kind of ambiguous of whether or not something was actually wrong with him because they they thought he was sick yeah and you never see whether or not he's sick or not like yeah. you don't see any of the telltale signs and besides kim is always like shielding him out of shots, so you yeah. can't really see what's wrong with him. Yes, yeah, I guess that's another good thing this movie did. It, it kind of kept you guessing. Um, but anyway, they they want to get out, and then that's when the guns come out, and they yeah they have a Mexican standoff. Yeah, so Will basically draws a gun on Paul and says, "We want to leave. We yeah, just but, want what's but, fair." But they they want to they they want to take them out because they think they're gonna take their food. And uh, they might be sick, and they Which need they to... Which they were right on, because Will actually even says, we want what's fair, we want enough food to get us yeah. by. Yeah. And uh, then everyone just... Uh, they, they go out, and <laughs> they basically kill off that whole family. Pretty much, yeah. Because yeah. there's an altercation, Paul gets the gun from Will, and... Oh, boy. Yeah. And then they die. Yep. And then, uh, basically, the movie ends with... Uh, um, Travis. Travis, Travis being sick. Yep. And, and he gets I, put down the same way as his it, grandfather. Yeah, they don't show it, but yeah. you know, you know what happens. Yeah. Which it makes me wonder if the whole plot was just a fever dream, or like it's him just remembering the last few moments before Paul basically offed him. Because the movie ends with uh, Paul and what was the wife's name, Sarah. Yeah. Just sitting at the dinner table. Just and, the two of them. Yeah, another with an empty chair between them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, because this movie, uh, it's very artsy. It, it, it gets it gets kind of uh, kind of cute with its editing, and yeah. uh, the, the soundtrack, which is like... Uh, very it, minimalist. It, it reminded me of the soundtrack of It Follows. Yeah, but even then, It Follows had a much more detailed soundtrack. Yeah. It wasn't just like... It's what I, it's like ambient noise. Yeah. Really. Yeah, it's it's like um it's like you buy one of those uh those mood CDs Something that you play like in the that. background yeah. while you while you meditate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, God, but fuck this movie was Yeah. Weak. Yeah, yeah, dude. Do not expect a happy ending. There yeah. is no happy ending here. Yeah, this is one of those movies you go to see where, I don't know if anybody, you know, you're just like, you know, I'm in too good of a mood. Let me just depress the shit out of yeah. myself. That, that's why I'm saying I'm not sure if it was a, this was the better option against The Mummy. Because honestly, the worst I've been hearing about The Mummy is, oh, it's, well, actually the best I've been hearing about The Mummy is, uh, it's, uh, it's a popcorn flick. It's a su summer blockbuster. Yeah. And I think people expected a little bit more out of The Mummy, especially since it's going to be establishing a... Cinematic, yeah, a cinematic universe for. The, by the way, not to get off topic here, but uh -huh. what the hell are they gonna do with that? I have no. What? Okay, idea. Uh, fine. Dracula, the Mummy, and the Frankenstein monster, oh, all the same shit. universe. What? I got it. What? Drac Pack reboot. Oh God! <laughs> no! I've been through enough tonight. <laughs> I've been through enough of that. That's I don't how it's gonna this. end. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 uh, seriously though, like what what the hell are they gonna do with a, a monster cinematic universe? But everybody's doing a cinematic universe now. Everybody's just following Marvel's lead. But well, here's the thing, like with Marvel. But then again, then again, it wasn't with Marvel. You know. Yeah. 
you know, be, even before that, Kevin Smith, you had the View Askew universe. Yeah, so it's yeah. not like it's a new thing. Yeah, but now all and, of a sudden, uh, it's a Tarantino trend. did it too. But it, it, it's not like it really mattered that those no. movies were connected. And in the case of like Marvel and DC, I mean, they're superheroes. It's it's a uh, it's an ongoing saga right. within, within comic books. It makes sense, but like. Why? Why the hell do we need a, a, a monster cinematic universe? We it's, don't. Like, like really, you, you know, it's, with with superheroes, you can just have them fight villains and just keep that ball rolling. Like, what do yeah. you what do you do with Dracula? What do you do? What do you, what do you do with the creature from the Black Lagoon? <laughs> I, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> why? <laughs> just why? <laughs> They're gonna team up and fight crime. <laughs> Oh, so it is Drac, but no, it's Monster Squad. Monster Squad. Mon the, the original Monster Squad. The original Monster not Squad. The, not the movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. It'll lead into Film Nation's Ghostbusters. <laughs> and it'll still be a better Ghostbusters reboot than the Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exa uh, oh. Save us, Tracy the Gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least you were likable. Well, only Kong least, can at least save you were us fun. Now. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh man, I don't know what? what else I can say about this movie other than it was fucking uh, depressing. Could you imagine if we saw this movie after we had that string of bad luck at the after we saw Get Out and then the Beltco experiment and then Logan? Yeah, it just and then we got saw this worse and worse. And it's yeah. like, oh, I don't want this to live been, anymore. This would have been Ugh. like the nadir, the perigee, uh, the lowest point we could get. <laughs> In the words of Red Letter Media, fuck movies. <laughs> this is like this is the film equivalent of a Godspeed you Black Emperor novel, uh, oh. Emperor album. Uh, it's oh. which is like if you never heard of that band, it's the most depressing instrumental music you've ever heard in your life. Really, I've never heard of them. <laughs> like it could be in like the best of moods, you play one of their songs and you're just like, fuck, I want to put a gun in my mouth. <laughs> Jeez. That's what this movie is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like it was, you know what this movie was? It was it was a small, small part of a much bigger story. Yeah. And I, I think that's the problem, because clearly something interesting was going on in the background of this movie with the whole yeah. sickness and the, the disease or whatever, whatever happened. And then we, we focused on uh, someone out in the middle of bumfuck nowhere yeah. just, that doesn't know anything about what happened. But honestly, if they would have expounded upon it, I think it would have ruined it. Yeah. I think so. If, you know... I was... Honestly, I was kind of waiting for some kind of twist. Like, maybe it turned out that there, there wasn't a sickness at all. And it was like the flu or something. <laughs> and, and it was curable. And, and it turned out they were just killing people for no they, reason. They all live in a village where they think it's 1886. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what a twist! Uh, fucking but, Shyamalan. Yeah, this was just... Ugh. The question is, do we recommend it? Uh, I mean, it was... For me, it was more morbid curiosity that I wanted to see it. Yeah. It wasn't just like, oh my god, this is going to be the next big, you know... No, no. definitely not. Definitely I, not. I can't say it wasn't engaging for a while. There were points where it lulled for me. Yeah. And I felt myself dozing off a little. <laughs> but... There, you know, mm. then I just jolted awake. I'm just yeah. like, shit. They, they knew when to wake you up. Yeah, they movie. really did. It's <laughs> like, wait, we haven't had a, a weird noise in a while. Let's throw one in there. Yeah, and it's funny because I was watching Evil Dead earlier, the first one, because I was, we were, I was, I was anyway debating because they had the screening at O Cinema Winwood for uh, Evil Dead Two. Yeah. But then I came to the rationalization of why would I want to drive an hour. <laughs> And pay twelve dollars to see a movie I could watch at home for free. True, but I was and we've already we've already met Bruce Campbell, so it's yeah. not like we. And I was <laughs> watching it with the commentary on, and he was going and Bruce. It was Bruce, and he was saying this thing about how uh, movies today, especially horror movies, kind of keep hitting you over and over and over again until and they, it kind of desensitizes you. And movies, you know, you don't see many movies where they give you up. A, a pause to breathe. Yeah. And this was a movie that did that. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, the, it had a scare, and then there was a long period yeah. where you can relax, you know, your heart rate goes down, you go, as he put it, you go relax, take a deep breath, go maybe make a submarine sandwich, <laughs> and get ready for the next piece of movie. Yeah. 
So yeah, and it worked for what this movie was trying to do. Yeah, I think my biggest gripe is that there were a few tangents that just didn't go anywhere. True. I think it could have been a longer movie, you know, because there was the whole tension between you know Travis and Will's wife Kim yeah. and all that other stuff. I, I was I was kind of expecting there to be like a divide, like uh, how yeah. how Travis would have maybe gone gone with them instead of like maybe me. But but then then I came to a realization that like his family is not like bad. No. Like maybe if he was because all of his all of his actions were understandable. And if he was like an abusive father or something, then I can see that happening. But then, yeah, but he, if, if he did that, it would yeah, be completely Paul pointless. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just, it, Again, his fears were definitely justified. It just, it just has me scratching my head. It's like, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I would say if, if you go into this movie and don't expect it to be a monster movie, no, do you, not. You might. I, I feel like if this movie was titled something else. Yeah, maybe we would have had we would have accepted it a little bit better, but if I, you if you go in knowing that this is not a monster movie, yeah, then maybe you can enjoy it a little bit more, just you know as a thriller, as as a you know a paranoid thriller, but yeah, but, uh, you know I don't know why they had to go lie to us about it, but um, yeah, the title was definitely misleading yeah. because there is no it. Nope, there is none. At least none that we saw. Nope. No. So. Anyway, anyway, that's it. That's it. Uh, is there anything else coming out next couple weeks no. that we're gonna see? Well, Transformers: mm. The Last Night, but no. we're not going to see it. We're just gonna rejoice when the trailers for that stupid oh, movie finally God. cease. I I'm so sick of that trailer. <laughs> God damn! Stop making Transformers dramatic. There's no. <laughs> He's like, these are troubled times. And I like, shut up! It's Transformers! No, it's Transformers. And that's the thing that always pisses me off about movies. When a movie pretends to be smarter than it actually is. Yes. You can't say a Michael Bay movie <laughs> and expect me expect me to believe that this movie is going to be intelligent. Yeah. That's, it's Michael Bay. I really hate, I hate when a movie like tries to pretend it's smarter than it actually is. Yeah. Looking at you, Alien Covenant. <laughs> Still not over it? No. <laughs> I don't think I ever will be. Uh, well. Anyway, uh, do you have anything else? Anything else you want to say about this? Uh, as far as this movie goes, um, I'd say maybe a Netflix or a Redbox. Yeah. Honest, I, I, I hate to say it, but you might, you might be better off going to see The Mummy. At least you'd get, like, satisfying action and, and you know... Tom Cruise yelling. People love that. And I don't know. I saw the. <laughs> I saw part of the double toasted review for it. And oh yeah. The first five seconds is just like this is bullshit. I mean, look at, it's a scene of like, the mummy basically sh doing a shoryuken on Tom Cruise and he flies ten feet into the air, and he's just like I can. I'm just gonna add cartoon sound effects to this and just <laughs> like it adds a giant bonk and it's just like, it's like oh my god. I have to watch that. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Uh, even I mean I'm talking about like by comparison I think maybe there there might be more fun to be had at the mummy yeah there's no fun to be there's had no this. there's no fun this is this is the kind of movie that like film theory students yes like, definitely really, this is something you watch in film class yeah there's and we're gonna analyze all of this yes and I'm sure I'm symbolism. sure there was something to it but I was not in like the right right mindset to be analyzing every single moment. No, neither was I. I, yeah. I was just like, I just need to get out of my house. I was in the middle of doing laundry. I'm just going to put my clothes in the dryer, and then I'm going to go out and see this. That was pretty <laughs> much my mentality. Yeah. So. You go go see go see Tom Cruise fight the fight <laughs> the mummy lady. Get sure you can <laughs> into a pit. <laughs> you you anyway. know you know what I was thinking. What? Uh, maybe. Here, here's a thought, and this is kind of crazy, but. Maybe the because Tom Cruise is in in the Mummy. Maybe the Mummy should have crossed over with Mission Impossible. I wouldn't put it past studio execs to do because that. Because think about think about that scene in the trailer where the plane crashes. <laughs> yeah. Like that that seems like right out of Mission Impossible. Well, there was that. Well, wasn't it the fourth Mission Impossible where he hangs onto the side of the plane yeah. as it's taking off? Yeah. Hey, there you which, go. Which he really did, by the way. Fucking hell. You didn't know that. No, no, I didn't realize he, that was actually... Okay, 
Say what you will about Tom Cruise. The dude... He's it, dedicated. The dude, is, he's got balls, man. Yeah. He did eight takes strapped to the side of a plane Shit. hanging on for dear life. Wow. <laughs> so, respect. Yeah. I don't care. I know he's kind of crazy, but Say what you respect. want about him, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, cross over, cross over the mummy with Mission Impossible. In fact, you can make that part of the, 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 the that could be the, the thing. It, that could be the thing. Mission Impossible versus the, the monsters. Yes. <laughs> I mean, listen, yeah. hey, listen, man. If Twenty One Jump Street and Men in Black can cross over, yeah, it, it ain't that far off. <laughs> Idris, Idris Elba is Billy the Kid versus Dracula. Hell yeah! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Come back to that again. <laughs> uh anyway we got uh, we went on we went on it. some several tangents on this one yeah uh, but anyway i think i think we're about done i think so yeah so so neither netflix or redbox and, netflix and and yeah that's it that's about it and don't expect a monster no no